being in the middle of building a highly successful and if I may say so, um, very useful and a niche tech SaaS product for e-commerce sellers. It's very interesting the journey that we have made to reach this far and some of the learnings that me and my team have learned along the way and I just wanted to share some of it with you. One of the earliest lessons we learned is customer is king. In our heads, we may imagine what a customer wants before building a tool, uh, but the reality of it sinks in only once it's deployed and only once it's in the hands of real customers, ideally customers who do not know you. We made a mistake pretty early on by making a few assumptions that we felt what our customers really needed. We really worked on putting together those features in our first release of the product, which I think was a mistake, primarily because a few of those features were pretty heavy. Uh, it took a while to build and did not serve enough of a purpose, did not resolve enough of a pain point for our early customers to have justified spending those extra days and weeks to build it. So what we should have done instead was to focus on the key main points that are and addressed by our potential customers. Another thing that we did that I wouldn't call a mistake, but something that we did was talking to our existing customers and sharing this new concepts with them. Now, in my experience, people are generally nice. They typically don't want to be offensive and they typically want to be liked um, in the sense of building personal relationships. And so sharing new concepts with your existing paying customers may not be the best strategy because typically they would be inclined to support whatever you do because of um, their personal liking and personal feelings towards you and may not provide the most harshest and the most critical feedback that is really needed at that point. In addition, speaking to your existing customers might not be the best because their viewpoint of your offering may be colored by your existing relationship and your performance in the uh, in the work that you have done so far. And hence, um, it's, it's easier said than done to find people who are not your customers, who don't know you personally, who are willing to spend some time with you giving you feedback at the same time being your perfect potential customer. So one thing that we did that really worked um, and I felt was really valuable was when we released our first version of the product at its very basic format, if something I was mortally embarrassed by, we got a few early customers and those customers again are people who I did not know before. And then I reached out to each of them. I emailed them saying that, hey, I'm the CEO of Xena. This tool that we built together, we, I would love to get your feedback on your experience of using the product. And to my surprise, a few of them took the time to set up meetings uh, with me and go through their experiences and even give real, real good impact or uh, real feedback rather. And I think that experience was really eye-opening for me because these people were busy individuals. They were successful e-commerce sellers, but still they took the time in meeting with me and giving feedback and also went uh, in certain cases step ahead by referring our tool to their network and they and even us we were completely aware that the tool is not final uh, there are we had miles to go in terms of functionality in terms of making the whole experience smooth despite that we had a quote-unquote evangelist people who did not know us before but then still rooted for our success and gave one of the most valuable resources that they can have to us that time. Uh, and so I, I think that was one experience where if when I would be continuing to build the tool and build any other tool in the future, it would be best to build a very basic version and put it out in the world and so that you can get the feedback in a way that is super useful to you and really understand what features are important and what is not. The final and I think perhaps one of the most important learning that I've had is when you think of a software product like HubSpot or you know even social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn, um, when you use these softwares, it's so, it's so well fleshed out. There are different features, there are different aspects to it. So you might imagine that whatever you build needs to be feature rich. It needs to satisfy each and every one from the get go. And um, 
equal emphasis should be laid on all the features. But the reality, I have discovered that most of the time, the feature that is perceived to be most valuable to our customers are the ones that we least expect them to be. Uh, are those the ones which did not pose any technical challenge to me and my team? And that's that's a funny, ironic coincidence where those features where we spend the most amount of time and brain power thinking turned out not to be as impressive or important to our potential customers in the feedback um, sessions that we had later. So that was uh, a interesting tidbit on that. So I think going forward, our focus will be to be capture that niche, whatever it may be. In our case, it is listing optimization and being the best at it, sticking to that lane, being known as the best listing optimization platform in the world. There is There are similar offerings done by other SaaS platforms, other softwares, but it is one amongst the many in their toolkit, one amongst the many offerings and softwares in their toolkits. I believe that sticking to this lane, that we will succeed and we will capture the market and we will build the best listing optimization tool on the planet.